Hey, what's going on, YouTubers? It's update time. Uh, I've been working on a few things. Uh, as you can see, we have the War of the Worlds alien here. Um, I don't remember if I've shown the base to this. I think I have, but uh, I'll just quickly show it again anyway. I'm really happy with how that turned out. It looks pretty cool. Uh, but the alien itself, uh, I've been sort of playing around with some ideas and I'm not really happy with the way it's turned out. Of, uh, it's kind of difficult to see in the video too because it's dark, but it's kind of a, a dark green and beige looking thing. But I'm going to try to get some veining on it, which again you can't really see that well in the video. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to repaint it. I'm not really that that happy with it and it certainly doesn't stand out against the base the base takes most of the attention and although it's cool in this case but you know the, the figure should should pop more from the base um, so yeah that's that's gonna need repaint so I'm gonna have to do something with that uh, another thing I've been working on is um, You know, the little, the little plane here, which again, there hasn't been a lot of work done on it. I've been working on uh, the little propellers, or propeller, trying to work out some ideas there to make a spinning prop, uh, which again, I'm not 100% happy with it. That's why I sort of haven't progressed. Um, it looks okay, but not ideal. I sort of did that one as well, where it's uh, not a full circle just just the prop blurs themselves which I kind of like I think it looks better in a sense but again I'm not I'm not completely sold on the ideas yet so that's why I haven't really done a lot with it um, I have done a, a base or started working on the base I should, I should say um, which at the moment it's just primed uh, just basically cut out an oval and uh, done a, a routed edge on, on both ends kind of give it a floating look to it uh, and then this will sit on there somewhere somehow uh, which I still haven't really worked on an angle right yet but maybe something maybe not as not as steep but I mean you know it's going down it's going to have the flames out of it, or the smoke coming out of it, and probably will be not as steep because then the, the prop won't look as good. So it sort of have to be like that, I guess. But yeah, like I said, I haven't done a lot of work on that, but it's something. Um, I've been working on the Death Star, which uh, I'm doing for the Aaron Newland's Star Wars group build. Uh, and we have a basketball, <laughs> which is too big to fit in the frame. Let me just adjust this a little bit. Um, and yeah, let me tell you, it was a <laughs> it was an effort to get it to this point. Um, and it's not perfect, but there's only so much you can do with. With uh, this thing, because it's all it's all crap. Um, you know, see if I can. You should be able to see there's a line right down here. It's show up in the light, but you know, I'm just gonna get it done. Basically, I'm gonna hopefully paint it and and sort of cover most of the the crap because it's all some of them up, some of them down. The seams are just all over the place, and it doesn't really fit that well here. You'll probably see the seam line there. Yeah, sort of ghosted in there. This is a step, and it it really isn't worth the man hours you're going to put into this thing. Um, but you know, in the end, I think it's going to be cool. It's got sort of you know decent detail on it. Nothing too special, but not crap either. Um, I'm in the process of doing the mid seam, uh, which yeah, that's going to be a bit tricky because that's that's 
basically it's made up of four quadrants for the top and four quadrants for the bottom. So in the middle, you got things up and down all over the place. So I've got to try to smooth it out, and there's a lot of filling going on there. And got to sort of limit the sanding to those those spots because you've got detail here and detail there. You don't want to sand that away. Um, but anyway, that's yeah. Like I said, it's 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 going to be all right. You know, for for a pretty bad kit, it, it it's yeah, <laughs> it's fought me. Don't get me wrong, but it's at a it's at a point where I'm sort of okay with it. Um, here's the uh, base for it, which you know it's pretty cool. It's going to be pretty pretty nice to, to paint up. And the thing that's bugging me with this is. Uh, you can see on the side here we've got a whole heap of injector pin marks um, which they're just too difficult to get in there and sand them so I don't know I'm sort of, kind of thinking this side's alright kind of thinking that I might just cut cut a strip of styrene to fit that shape but of course it's got to be exactly the same um, you know and just sort of cover it up put it over it well I'll see how I go I'm going to try to do some sanding on it and We'll work it out, um, but yeah, that's you yeah, know, it's almost at the painting stage, so that's one thing that's good. Uh, the next thing I've been working on oh, for probably the past uh, month, and probably taking up most of my time, I just uh, I don't know, I got into it and got excited. <laughs> Uh, this here, Back to the Future, the Aoshima kit, Aoshima, Aoshima, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a pretty nice kit. They're um, for me, it's actually cheaper to get these ones from Japan than it is to get the Polar Lights ones, and these ones are actually nicer kits. The only thing the Polar Lights have got going for them, I think, is the uh, the pre-painted bodies, um, and. Uh, yeah, the detail on these kits are a lot better. Uh, let's put it on the other side, I want to show you. Right there. And it also gives you the option of the road version with those uh, old school wheels, or you also get a base and uh, the train tracks and the train wheels. That's the route that I've taken. And um, almost in the into final assembly here, I'll just show you the pieces bit by bit. Uh, there's the body. Now, I've used um, maybe I should just camera down a little bit. Give me a second. I've used the uh, Alclad stainless steel, which uh, at first I wasn't really liking, but yeah, I think it looks about right. It's got a nice. Uh, stainless steel feel to it and by the time we do the weathering and stuff on it it'll knock it right down so um, although I don't really want to because <laughs> uh, I'm actually liking how it's looking but unfortunately we have to put some dust and dirt and all that good stuff over it um, and I'm going to try not to overdo it this time uh, we have the train tracks which uh, aren't painted that's just how they come Still got to paint these. Um, we've got the chassis, which uh, is painted, sort of. Still need to do some more weathering on it. Um, but you're not going to see under anything anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, the, the, the wheels, I'm happy with as they are. I'm not going to do any more to those. They're going to gonna stay like that. Um, and of course that will sit on top of that. Um, what else have we got? We got the interior, which uh, is basically complete. Not much more I need to do on this. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done a darker grey, but it, it might work alright because once it actually goes in the body, it'll be shadowed anyway. So, you know, I sort of wanted to see the detail that's in it. Uh, done some flocking, added some extra wires. I mean, you can go crazy putting amount of wires that are actually in there, but 
you know, I didn't want to really do that. This this was actually supposed to be a you know fairly simple, quick build, but <laughs> as I got into it, I got more excited and started spending a lot of time in the details. But uh, yeah, it's looking cool. It's got all the the, uh, the decals. The only thing it's missing, which I might make, is the little uh, gauge that they have in part three for the, uh, the, the what do you call it, the boiler, when it explodes. Uh, we have the glass and the top dials and buttons and gizmos and whatever else, and a whole heap of injector pin marks, which I didn't bother because they're on the, on the ceiling and you're not going to see them. Um, but yeah, so that's that's done. Uh, we have the back panel with the flux capacitor that's also complete and uh, which will basically sit in here. That's why I've got all these sort of wires sort of half done too so when they sit together you know the wires go where they're supposed to go. Well it's hope they do because these <laughs> that's sort of the last assembly, this is going to be glued on the body, and yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, then we have the rear, the rear panel, uh, which, I don't know what you would, what the heck they would call all this stuff, it's not really the engine, it's, uh, well, I guess it, I guess it is. It's more the uh, time machine, time parts, I don't know. But yeah, it basically sits, if I can get it right. I can't get it right. Okay. We'll basically sit in there. And this little piece will go on top. And then we have these gizmos which will sit behind it. So we'll end up like that. Um what else is there? Oh, we have a whole container of parts here that have been painted. Uh, just little details need to be added on. Like, I don't know what these things are, but they make time travel possible. <laughs> they, you know, they go on the back of it somewhere. Um, and of course the front. And it's all just bits and pieces. You know, the little things that go on the side here. Like I said, just all little hoses and, and whatever else that they're all painted up ready to go. Um, we have Mr. Fusion. He's done. Um, we have this piece here which uh, replaces that microchip that was destroyed. Um, I don't know how good this is coming through, but. Just need some more uh, weathering. Yeah, it's coming out alright. Uh, basically, sits on top of there. So yeah, um, having some you know, a lot of fun with this one actually. It's uh, probably where I spent most of my time this past month. Part of the past month. Um, and like I said, it's pretty much at final assembly stage. There's a few little bits and pieces that I need to do, and then start gluing everything together, which should go fairly quickly. I mean, it is Japanese kit, so there's, there won't be any fit issues or anything like that. I mean, it'll all pretty much go together pretty easy. Um, and then, of course, once it's together, I've got to do the sort of final weathering. You know, the, the making it look dusty and like it's been through the desert, but. I mean, it is really dusty on the show, um, but I don't know if I want to go that far. I'm just going to try to do it really subtle, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not really good at subtle weathering. It's one thing I've got to work on. Uh, so yeah, chances are I'm going to probably go overboard, but uh, hopefully I don't end up like that uh, Mercedes car that I did. But this time we're going to try and uh, you know do a little bit of weathering and let it go. And then come back the next day or something and see how it looks and then just add a bit more. But, but anyway, uh, I won't take up any more of your time. But, uh, 
Uh, yeah, Han Solo. He's in the he's in the bath with uh, Princess Leia, taking a good bath together, nice and warm and soapy and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, once I you know, sort of clean him up or uh, stop you know, trimming the trimming the vinyl and that, and, and getting into put them together and prime him and start working on him as well. But uh, for the moment, I'm going to concentrate on this uh, DeLorean. I'll get that done because it's, uh, it's near the end, and then uh, then we don't know what we're going to work on next. But anyway, alright, guys, I'll catch you later.